Greetings fellow humans. We are on a cleaning slash restoration slash repair mission today. If you're new here, I'm Emily. I like old stuff, sewing stuff, fashion stuff. And a few months ago, my partner found this old hand crank sewing machine in a charity shop and decided to pick it up for me. Now before buying it, he did check that all of the parts that needed to move did in fact move, but beyond that we had no idea when it was from, where it was from, and how much work it would need to be fully operational. So after getting it home, I went into full research mode to learn as much about this sewing machine and its origin story as I possibly could, and then I started doing my best to get it cleaned up and working smoothly again. The first place I start when researching any vintage sewing machine is the company or manufacturer name and the serial number if the machine has one. The company name on this machine was the American Sewing Machine Company of London, but with a little bit of research I found out that the actual full name of the company that made this sewing machine was the American Buttonhole and Overseeming Company of Philadelphia. The information available about this company varies greatly, with some sources saying they began to manufacture sewing machines as early as 1854, and some saying the late 1860s, but it is verifiable that the company officially incorporated in 1886. However, the company did exhibit at the Paris International Exhibition with a purchasable sewing machine in 1867, began selling sewing machines in London in 1868, and there were records of advertisements and patents aplenty for a while before that. For example, this 1865 German advertisement or this 1876 US advertisement for their new American sewing machine, and this advertisement for the company's number no. 7 style treadle sewing machine that the Huntington Digital Library dates to sometime between 1880 and 1898, because according to them the number no. 7 style was introduced in 1880, although information that I found later in my research did contradict that. Magic of historical research, kids. Apparently, the company started seriously struggling in the mid-1880s with reports of workers being laid off and factories closing due to overproduction, and the Huntington Digital Library states that the last documentation that exists for the American Sewing Machine Company is from 1898. This advertisement was one of the more useful things I found in terms of dating my machine, because I could tell from the illustrations of the style of the machines that my machine was from this point or later, particularly because the company's previous models had a much more distinct look and shape. This, for example, is the Model 6, released in the 1870s. But thanks to this image showing the difference between the bobbin shape of a number 7 and a number 9, I knew my machine wasn't a number 7, so I could start looking at later dates. But then, quelle surprise, later in my research, I found a section in The Invention of the Sewing Machine by Grace Rogers Cooper that placed the discontinuation or last record of the American Sewing Machine Company in 1886, and a few pages later it had a handy list of serial numbers that could approximately date machines made by this company. That book dates serial numbers between 103540 and 121477 to the year 1876, but sadly, those are the last serial numbers that it provides dates for. A slight issue for me, as the serial number for my machine is 124272. It did however helpfully explain that figures weren't available to accurately date serial numbers between 1877 and 1886, and as six digit serial numbers starting 103 to 121 were made in 1876, and my machine's number is six digits beginning 124, I think it would be quite reasonable and pretty safe to say that this beauty is from 1877. In terms of working on the machine itself and cleaning it up, I learned so much by doing it. All the research I'd done was pretty clear that it isn't a great idea to use harsh chemicals on the machine, so I should, if possible, only use sewing machine oil to clean the machine and get it moving. The bobbin was completely oil soaked when I removed it and took the thread off it, and I did everything I could to remove as much dust and loose dirt as possible from the machine before applying any sewing machine oil, because that would just get real messy.
Eventually, I realised there were sections of the machine I couldn't renew with only sewing machine oil and elbow grease, so I acquired some white vinegar to put those pieces into a vinegar bath. Now, I was really worried that I wouldn't remember where different machine parts belonged after taking them off the machine, so any pieces I removed from it, I separated into different groups so I could, like, keep track of what was what. And this, honestly, made me incredibly grateful that I'm the kind of weirdo who just keeps empty jars around in case they might be useful, because in this instance, they were incredibly useful. It allowed me to put each of the groups of machine parts that I'd made into individual mini vinegar baths, which was one of the best decisions I made in this whole process. Some decisions that I made, however, were not quite so clever. Okay, so yesterday something happened that absolutely horrified and terrified me. I put a piece of the machine that I just hadn't been able to get the screws out of, they, they were not budging, and I was seriously getting to the point of nearly damaging them. I just put the piece in a vinegar bath assuming it would be totally fine, thinking, this is an entirely metal thing. It's a robust, sturdy machine. No damage could be done to it by mere vinegar. A little while later, I went back to look at how it was getting on, and if the rust on the pieces that I wanted to remove rust from was shifting at all, and noticed that it had turned green. Like, the black sections of the outside of the machine that are visible on the machine that are generally black had turned green. 
and I freaked out. It scared the bejesus out of me. So I immediately went to work trying to see if it was something that was on the surface, what the heck had gone on, if it's something that if I put enough sewing machine oil on it would somehow magically rectify, and I'm not sure how. Wiping sewing machine oil onto it definitely shifted the colour a little bit, and now it's totally fine. It's completely back to normal in terms of colour, and the only difference is that this is nice and shiny and silver in colour, whereas previously it was looking pretty brassy and kind of gross. It's frustrating that I haven't been able to remove this screw to get it to shift at all because it means that the gear that's in there is still pretty grimy, and the area behind and around that gear that has, you know, 145 year old grease and gunk in it is not easy to get to to clean, so it's not ideal. But I like that the metal is now nice and shiny, and I like that it didn't stay green. So when I came back this morning after realising that no actual lasting damage had been done and it was totally fine, I stuck another bit of the machine that I couldn't get the screws out of into a vinegar bath, and I can show you what that looked like last night and why I panicked so much. Can you see, like, the visible line between the nice normal black and the strange filmy misty green that's there. It is definitely not ideal to be doing this this way, but if it's the only way that I can get the rust off of this bleeding bit of the machine, it's what I'm gonna need to do. Anyway, I've got a lot of scrubbing to do, so I'm gonna go do that. I'll see you later. Now when it came to reassembling the machine, I was so thankful I had separated the various machine parts into groups. It made it much, much simpler to figure out where everything was meant to go when I started putting it back together. The saga continues. I made a lot of good progress, but I did run into some issues, some of which 
thoroughly freaked me out because some of the metal pieces that I put into a vinegar bath to remove dirt and rust from, I left in too long. And not only did I remove dirt and rust from them, I also removed the metal plating from them and they came out of the vinegar bath a dark, dull metal. The thing that freaked me out is I noticed that I could scratch that metal with my fingernail which potentially indicated that those pieces were made of lead. So I got a bit panicked that I had inadvertently exposed myself to lead poisoning, went into panicked research mode, and thankfully came across a bit of info that reminded me that lead and the majority of lead alloys are not magnetic. So I borrowed a little neodymium magnet from Hamish and checked it, and thankfully they were not made of lead. I think they're most likely made of iron, but the plating coming off them means that they're more likely to rust in future. Thankfully, they're pieces that are relatively easily removed and separated from the machine without taking the entire thing apart, so if I need to clean them and finish them in some way, shape or form in the future, that is something I can do. In the meantime, I have a lot of bits to stick back on this machine, so let's get to that. Something I found entertaining about this whole process is there were a few points where I tried looking up other sewing machine restorations to try and solve an issue I was having, and despite finding a multitude of videos about restoring sewing machines of a similar age to this one, they were all pretty unhelpful because they were all about Singer sewing machines, which work completely differently to this one and have almost no similarity in any of the internal mechanisms or mechanics. I definitely learned a lot about how sewing machines work, or can work, and I am incredibly excited that I now have this 145, 146 year old sewing machine that sews beautifully.
At some point I am going to need to make some sort of cover to keep the dust off the machine, and I should really go back and electroplate the three parts that lost all of their plating. But this was a super fun adventure, and might be more than a little bit dangerous, because buying and cleaning and restoring old sewing machines is like a whole hobby in and of itself, but definitely one that requires more storage space and workshop space than I have at this home. Will that stop me? Probably not. If you enjoyed this and you want to see if I actually managed to avoid buying more vintage sewing machines, then consider sticking around. I would really appreciate that. If you like this video, liking videos always helps me out. I hope to see you in my next endeavour, and whether you decide to stick around or not, I hope everything's okay in your world, and I will see you all the next time.